told you a thousand times, Chester. It's the number of blind dates I've been on when no one turned up, followed by the worrying number of lumps under my left arm, the date my childhood sweetheart married my best friend, the age my cat was when I ran him over, the number of conversations I've had with my father, and the exact time that my mother will Fourth time's the charm, and here's your fourth time through hint. Don't worry too much if you don't get a path right first time and you fall off track. Eamon will still have a tidy little nervous breakdown, that's always fun, and you can change what happens in those breakdowns by getting Peter Clement drunk, angry, or both. So even if you fuck up the main treasure hunt, there's still new stuff to see and fun to be had, because it's my DLC, and I told them to spoil you rotten with content. And I have compromising photographs of the developers. Off you go. And we'll be back on the estate tomorrow night when Karen finds out if Sharon's half-sister is also Barry's long-lost brother and Harry comes face-to-face -face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue. It's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in Live and Spooky. And tonight, they'll be asking if the old brewery in Arsminster... Yeah, I realise that, Eric, but my family have made it clear to me that my episodes are embarrassing for them, so I suggest we stick to the script so I don't have to face the ire of all four of my brothers. Or worse, my sister. Nothing more important than family, Eric. Yeah, maybe one day you'll realise that. You can never persuade a lady to let you cough your muck up her... Yep, standing by. Good evening, I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend, and now running for Prime Minister. Everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's been brought here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job. But, as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, laces. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three. Good evening, friends, and yes, it's true, and I can't really believe it myself. We are back with this special one-off uh, reunion episode of Just the Job. And just to be clear, it is the show that you remember with me, old sidekick, little Jimmy Chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY, and of course, 
some special surprise guests from just the job. Dave's family planning clinic. Dry and itchy or angry and weeping? I beg your pardon? Just passing the time. Well, we don't have much time, so... You'd be surprised, mate. We have all the time in the world, in a way. Well, you might. But I'm on a bit of a tight. Oops. Hang on, Dave. Stand by, Eamon. There. Go, Eamon. Sorry, Dave. Back in a second. I'm going anywhere. Yeah, it certainly is me. <laughs> you naughty, <laughs> naughty fucker! <laughs> sorry, sorry, Peter. sorry. Frank, did you know about that? Look at that expression. <laughs> you did, didn't you, you fucker? <laughs> you did, didn't you, <laughs> Peter, you thought you were here tonight Peter, to record a special reunion episode of Just the Job. I, I, I just, I can't believe this. But tonight, just, can't Peter believe Clement, this. But tonight, these Peter are the Clement. bits of your life! <laughs> Let's get you back to the studio. Fuck it! Emma, I can't bloody do so. Look at that! All the way along! Thank you! They're all part of this way, Peter. Might just step there. I don't know. I can't believe it. Honestly, I'm, I'm a huge fan of your show. I think it's incredible. I, 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 I never right, believe I'm back. Oh, it's colder than ever. None stare out here. That was weird. Anyway, just a quick call to say. Make sure I call the guests in the right order or Raymond has a wig out. Um, well, not the words I would have picked, but basically, yeah. That's it, yeah. Shows the safe hands, mate. Evidently. Oh, there's. Eamon, bye. Uh, yeah, bye. Yeah. That freaked him out. Stay off, trust me, I'll have your vote. So, Eamon, how long have you been uh, planning this? Eamon. Eamon. How long have you been planning this? Eamon. Eamon. Peter Gordon Clement, you were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. Show me up. That's right. They got up at the crack of dawn to make the trip all the way down to the capital by coach. It's your infamous old man and her long-suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. You're not them. It's Jim. Uh, right, yeah, uh, Al. Let's get you sat down. <laughs> ah, lovely to have you both. Uh, lovely to have you here. Uh, so tell us, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? Well, obviously, I wasn't there for it, Eamon. So this path is something about a long lost brother. Oh, yeah. We're good friends. And from what he said, I'll get the impression Peter was a bit of a bully. How long has this been going on? Sorry, mate. Touch the nerve there, have I? You know how it is with me and our Sid. Oh, yeah. He told me all about it. He told me all about it. Have a good show. Have a good show. Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! <laughs> In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, and already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? <laughs> oh, ladies' man, Peter Clement. With penis so small, you need space telescope to know if it even exists. Ah, oh, fuck off, Ivan. <laughs> it's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Ball. No, it bloody isn't. No, it bloody isn't. Some sort of rock and roll star. This is Ivan Bodovich, and one of my oldest friends, I. <laughs> Chelsea. Ivan. Ivan. Uh, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring Prime Minister? You know, I, I listening before I come on your set, and I hear name Sydney, and I think I not heard his name in 25 years. Let's keep it that way, shall we, mate? Oh, you do like good night at goat fight, always bleeping and snapping at each other. And then one day, poof, he gone. And just like that. And never spoken off again. And that's the way I like it, Eamon. Should we get the next guest out? Oh, wait, first we open Erkistani Special Reserve. Not in the mood, mate. Hey, you OK, my friend? Sorry. Not your fault. That's sorry. Meet in the pub after. Not your fault. Meet in the pub after. Ivan Vodovic. Ivan the lot above, everybody. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, now, uh, before we bring our next guest on, 
Let's take a look at the classic clip from Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to take a look. I still remember it like it was yesterday. The facts. And that's about two minutes. I'm going for a gander. Get my mind off things. I took Peter to one side while Jimmy did his solo spot Jim's things. I didn't want Peter to hear it from anyone else. Anyway, what happened next is history. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that a team of surgeons laboured for. Everything OK? Is this some sort of fucking joke, Eric? And Why would I want to be reminded of that? I, I don't choose to play in this. It's some bloke called Dave. Oh, he's getting proper pissed off. Dave and the broadcast team. That's me. Right. I remember that. Can we reset, please? Shit. I'm going to have to leave the... This is one where they get cancelled. We can skip it by pressing the add button again. Not really, LJ. Standing for this, there are supposed to be... We think Mayor found him. Who? Sydney, the brother. So? He lives in the capital about ten minutes from the fucking studio. I'm not aware of there being any brother in the script, Derek, so, I mean, what's the point of us... Eamon, fuck the script. This is the type of TV that people remember. The type that wins TV Nation Awards. TV Nation Awards? Yeah, they're coming up, aren't they? Um, yeah, fuck it, let's send Helen a taxi just in case. Already on it. Ten seconds, everybody. TV fucking Nation Awards. Going in five, four, three... What well, fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. Oh, no, hang on, wait, he's been on already. We didn't have much back then, but where there's a finger, there's fun, as they say at the confectioners. Give me that woman. Son, it's your dad. The pricks have sent us on at the wrong ruddy time. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's a man and a woman who need no introduction, but we're going to give him uh, them one. Anyway, it's your sidekick. Uh, no, look, it's clearly your parents. Well, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight into this bit of Peter's life. What are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Not much. They're both feckless ingrates. Martin Clement, you take that back. He's your own flesh and blood. Shut up, woman, blithering on with your nonsense. Well, I think everybody thinks they know our Peter, but no one knows him like his mam does. I know him better than he knows his own foreskin, as they say at the bar mitzvah. He was just about passable when he was younger. Not a patch on his brother, but you don't get too like that. We're ever so proud of him. He's like the first cook of the spring, as the airmen say. Well, uh, apparently we have some archive, never-before-seen footage of you, Peter, with your mysterious brother, on the Just the Job set. What is this, Eamon? Fucking ambush! Oh, he's proper angry now. All right, Alfie. All right, I was Sid. What would you to the capital? Oh, yeah. Had to hand deliver some contracts for Mr. Barrington. Thought I'd make the most of it and see the hottest show in town. Oh, you flatter me. It's that fellow at the Royal Grange, right? Oh, you cheeky boy. <laughs> Where are you sat? Oh, they're just going to slip us in at the back, I think. We didn't have tickets. At the back? Like, fuck they will. Oh, don't make a fuss, Alfie. Frank! Frank! I want the best seats in the house for my two very special guests. This is my brother. And this. This is my brother. And this. Oh. Oh. Welcome. Oh, God, I'm, I'm forgetting my manners. Peter, this is the lady I was telling you about. The one that has you enamoured. I, I can see why. I'm not afraid to say you're probably looking at Mrs. C. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. You seem close. They were. Until he went to that capital and became one of you TV ponces. Martin! <sighs> abandoned his brother. He abandoned me. He walked away. Because of what you did, you sneaky little shite! Well, as 
I say at the laundrette, the past is like a spunky jumper. Jesus, I raise your grin like a Christ! Will you shut up, woman, and let me speak? Will you shut up, woman, and let me speak? Go on, then. Go on, then. Well, with... Well, with... With all your fussing, I've... With all your I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Fanny and Martin Clement, everybody. In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Don't worry, darling, we can still get this show on track. Oh, Christ. I think we all know that voice. Uh, at the wrong time in the show, ladies and gentlemen, a woman with the power to destroy us all, Dorothy Hammerman! You didn't call me even earlier. I'm having a very difficult day, so just be glad I've had time to calm down and be in a more personable mood. However, the organisation on this show is a Farago. Yes, ma'am, it's, it's Dave in the broadcast room. He's just fiddling with the machines. However... I wouldn't say fiddling, I'd say more like meddling. Let's just carry on. Look, here, take this and put it in there, shall we? Yes, ma'am. Shall we? Yes, ma'am. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, I just don't like talking about our Sid. Well, I, I know you don't, like but suck it up, because it might well make you Prime Minister. Okay, sweetie? Prime Minister. Okay, sweetie? Yeah. <sighs> now, let me ask you this. What's it like? The last the... time that I saw What's Sydney like? and Peter together was in 1960 at Peter's wedding. Well, Sydney was sat at the front, and I was just starting out at that time. We all were, but I knew I had to get an invite to new TV sensation Peter Clement's Wedding of the Year. Well, oh, hardly. It was a small chapel near Rothering. Yes, well, everything was going fine until the reception when, between songs performed by that dreadful band you booked, the two of you could be heard screaming obscenities in the car park. Well, you came back in after a few minutes as if nothing had happened and grabbed Mrs. C and started dancing. The, the Lombardi, if I remember correctly, which, as you know, darling... You always do. I always do, don't I? Well, Sydney drove off, and rumour has it that you never spoke again. Is that true? Why are you telling everybody this? Well, it's ratings, darling. Ratings. So... The question I have for you, Peter, uh, is... I, I, I usually ask the question. What the hell were the two of you rowing about that night? So did you say something, Edmund? Well, it's just I usually ask the question. Oh, yeah, sorry. Well, what do you want to say? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, no, actually, that was very good, yeah. No, sorry, uh, Dotty, viewers. No, but that sorry. conversation were private, and that's how I that think it should stay. That conversation were private, and that's how I think it should stay. Dorothy Hammerman! <laughs> <laughs> You're famous! There is no private! Still, your funeral or election? Well, it wasn't only. Just the, just the job that the nation invited into their hearts. Starting in 1977 and running every weeknight for almost six years, you brought your own inimitable Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late night chat show, Petey. <laughs> Let's take a look at that now. Let's take a look at that now. And a couple of minutes back. Same as before. And somehow managed to book a very special guest as a birthday present for Peter. Any news? We're still trying. It's 50 50. During his second run in the 70s, but it dropped out due to last minute advice from his agent. He'd been in a successful pop band back then, The Socialite, but since received a calling to ministry and became a. Another drink to go on the list. Peter has always been a fan of his. Penny for him. If you were a pop star, Eric, a genuine cocaine 
groupies on the tour bus level pop star. Mm. Would you give it all up to be a priest? <sighs> oh, I don't know. It's probably as crazy as giving up a five night a week chat show to become a politician. Ha! I'll drink to that. Hey. Oh, no thanks, I still need my job. Can we reset, please? We all love the socialites, don't we, everybody? Really? you think getting smashed on live television would have really... How long did he get here? Can we hear my last? Capital traffic, it's hard to say. We may have to bump the song. Ah, fuck the song. TV Nation Award. TV Nation Award. What can I do? Uh, go long into the next interview. The ratings are great. Yeah, we can overrun. Ten seconds, everybody. Who's on next? <sighs> Fuck only knows. Going in five, four, three. Unforgettable stuff. But while you took all the credit, arguably someone else did all the work, didn't they now? Well, I don't know about taking the credit, but I'm hoping to share in the trust. <laughs> With the fifth of the bits of your life, it's... Play the music! Ah, oh, of course, yes, do me something! Don't worry, Pat, they'll all know it soon enough. <laughs> Let's take a seat, shall we? <laughs> Lovely, lovely to have you here. Lovely, 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 lovely. To have you here. lovely. lovely. So, uh, PT ran for so, nearly six uh, years. PT Tell me, what's really your favourite memory what's from all those shows? <laughs> well, all those my earliest memory of Peter well, was, was actually from the news. <laughs> I was a precocious in child news. in the 50s. 57, was it, when you cycled the length of the country for charity? <laughs> Can you believe you even did that? Still got the dicky knees to prove it. <laughs> and then by the time that Petey was on, well, I was very busy with my legal career, so I rarely got the chance to see it. But, uh, but, but I remember the one with the sexy ostrich, obviously. Everyone does. <laughs> I hate that clip. That man still makes me bloody angry. But I think the thing about that show was that it demonstrated that Peter could talk to anyone, from royalty to Roughnecks. Everyone has the best brought out of them by this man. Well, let's hope that's true for you too. Let's hope that's true for you too. Do I go? Normally. Mrs. Miss. Mrs. Saltburn. Salisbury. Uh, let's just go with Julie. Julia. Uh, let's just go with Julie. So. So. What. What. Do you know about Peter's brother Do Sydney? Do you know about Peter's brother? We have a brother. Sydney. We'll talk after. How could you not mention we'll your brother? We will talk we'll after. We will talk after. Okay. We'll talk after. Okay. We'll talk after. Do I go now? Uh, Jesus, I'm uh, Rachel Tucker uh, Christ. Jesus, I'll do it. Julius Salisbury, everybody. <laughs> And so to last year, when you surprised the entire nation by announcing you were giving it all up to form your own political party. And because the final bits of your life are always about the future... I remember you slip it me tongue in Gittle ran back at your nan's house. Well, you reckon it were your first kiss, Well, obviously that line's not going to work. Ah, uh, let's just bring her out here. Um, I met her earlier. Her name's Edna Kate or something. Just play the music. Oh, 
Oh, what were it? the amiable rivals? That's what us girls called them. Oh, of course, you know, we'd all snogged at least one of them, but most of us had snogged them both. Oh, they used to get into right old ding dongs over it. Oh, Petey Love, you really should speak to Sid again. He misses you. He needs to apologise to me first he for what he said about my wife at my wedding. For what he said about my wife Look at us, my love. Wedding. Hey? Look at us. We've both done a lot of time. I reckon we're over halfway. I reckon we're over halfway. Please, don't let it be another 25 bloody years, sweetheart. He'll never forgive me, Chelsea. Would you? <laughs> I'd forgive you anything, but I suppose I'm not a stupid, proud man. We've been together for 25 years. He made me choose. So I chose. Yeah, I know. And that's hard, but if you really think about it, that's a lot more choice than you gave him, isn't it? Right, end the cakes, everybody. <laughs> yeah, right, off you go that way, love. Fantastic. Well, um, Fantastic. we've got a bit of a treat for you and for you. But first, uh, let's take a look at the uh, current Peter uh, Clement. This is a, a bit of footage from you from the debate a few short weeks ago. Every single study worldwide acknowledges that a society's most stable building block is the family. Yes, obviously, we think that family is important too, but just, uh, well, uh, not in the way that you do. We need to put in place policies that encourage families to stay together. Whose family? I beg your pardon? Your family, Jacob, with your estate and your nannies to wipe your ass? Yes, nannies. Or yours, Henry, where your children's education is factored into the budget. <laughs> but my, my parents were self-made. Self-made millionaires, yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. And if I came from families like yours, I'd probably feel the same way too, but I didn't. I didn't get piano lessons. Our neighbours didn't complain about us because we had piano lessons. They complained about us because we fought. We fought and we fought. My dad tore strips off us with his bare hands and his belt. And we deserved it because we fought too. And there were times... And there were times... Doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is that not all families should be encouraged to stay together. There are some cases where families should just simply be left to rot. And they're sticking two chubby fingers up to both of you for families first and families forever or whatever it may be. Because they didn't stay together because they wanted to. They stayed together because they had to. Because the successive policies of both your governments meant do that or fucking starve. Amazing footage there from the debate. Well, Peter, as you know, normally at this point in the show, we give the guests their picture frame and we roll end credits. But uh, we're changing the format a little tonight and tearing up the script, which uh, <laughs> I have to say on this occasion feels... It actually feels quite thrilling, you know? <laughs> Probably worthy of some sort of, oh, I don't know, uh, TV Nation Award or something, you know? <laughs> Get on with it! Tonight... We're running over a little because we have a surprise seventh bit of your life. Uh, hidden piece, if you like. Hidden piece, if you like. You haven't seen him for 25 years. Oh, fuck off! Your brother, Sidney Clement! <laughs> So 
South Beach. All right, I said. Looks like we're gonna have our chat then. All right, looks that way. Lads, 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 For God's sake, talk to each other. For God's sake, talk to each other. What did you say to him at the reception? What did you say to him at the I reception? I made a prediction, that's all. You called my word into question, and you insulted me, and you insulted my wife. Maybe you should have thought of that before you stole her from me. It was her choice. It was always that way. Always their choice. We agreed. As children, maybe. Not as adults. Not as men. It was her choice, our said. I know. And I never should have said what I said. Bloody awful prediction. What was it? A month? It'll be 25 years this anniversary. Aye, well, she's quite the woman. Aye. She's quite the woman. She is that. Oh, it's so strange. Oh, it's so strange. Caught of an hour ago, I was sat at home watching this show, watching that clip of me introducing you to, and I thought, I wish they'd had the camera on her face. Because as soon as she set eyes on you, I knew I was gone. And it's taken me a long time to come to terms with that. What you have that I don't. It's just the job. Celebrity it makes you sort of sparkle. I don't understand it, but it's true, nonetheless. But it's true. I really loved her, our Pete. I know. And I am sorry, I said. And I am sorry, I said. And it's taken me a long time to understand that. A long time. Peter. Peter. These are all. These are the bits of your life. Like you're running in circles. Do you feel like every month costs more? You're not alone. Yeah, okay. He's such a sweet.